All right. We are in our IG live. Hey, girl. Let everybody come in. My Instagram is We got it? All right. Mm -hmm. I'm like, my Instagram is, we're going to pull it together. How are you doing? What's up? I'm good. How are you? Oh, God. I, I almost was going to be late, but I'm like, oh, my God. Good, good, good. It's crazy, <laughs> but how are you? How do you pronounce your Tali. name? Your first name? Halene. Halene. Okay. All right. We're gonna let people in. I want you guys to welcome yourselves. This is what's your mean? The conversation series, stemming some conversations off my book, mm. which was officially public. Well, the well the publication date was yesterday, October third. So it's been very exciting. So this is gonna be our last live stream because we've been doing it for some week now. Some weeks now. And also, it's a busy time for me, for my business, because everyone is very image conscious and holidays, parties, and company parties. It's getting kind of crazy. Mm -hmm. So that's why I was almost late today. I was like, oh, I got to go. <laughs> so we're going to make it. So let's get this party started, because this is going to be a very fun episode. All right, welcome to the final episode. This was a very special series. I definitely want to thank everyone who I've dragged in here. And we had so much fun. I hope they, I think they learned. I would think so. After all these weeks, we've been um, diving into different topics of my book regarding your fashion identity and lining it with your personal or professional use. Everyone's different by case by case. We're going to actually do a live exercise with you, Thailand. I'm a guinea pig. <laughs> yes. So as everyone was just listening to some of the passages on from my book, um, so yeah, I was just like, let me do this one because you do branding yourself, right? Mm -hmm. So I said, let this will be a very good exercise to see where she is in her life and if she like ties in her personal and professional brand because some people do some people don't so let's get into it yeah by the way congrats on your book that's amazing and i absolutely love your ig live you're so clever so clever yes thank yeah. you i listen i during the pandemic i had a lot of downtime and yeah the pivot when i like look through like my journals um I saw I was like writing what the void was, which was pretty much we're living in a society where it's camera ready. Mm -hmm. Anyone can be viral at any moment. Everyone is judging you off of your cover arts or your B-roll. Like, oh, girl, I saw you in the background. <laughs> so I just felt like no one really, you know, puts in the work for their everyday fashion. It's more of the moment when you're going to a party or when you're going to an event. I mean, I do that, but like, what about your everyday in the back end of it? So, um, yeah, my mentor, my business mentor just raised the question because I still had like a small percentage of corporate who were still using me during the pandemic. And I saw that little entry I wrote in my little journal, my little notes that I doodled, and I just reconstructed everything. And that's also just how my book just spawned. So, yeah, this is literally like the redirection post-pandemic. Yeah. And a lot of businesses during the pandemic, there were so many businesses that started in the pandemic because what else are you going to do? So, yeah, I'd yeah. love to hear your take on it. And then, of course, I'll share my expertise as well. <laughs> so let's get started. We're going to read some of the, we're going to read the directions for this exercise. This exercise is section two of chapter one. It's the calendar activities. Mm -hmm. So, but the theme of this episode is, is your clothing mix aligned with your calendar activities? A lot of people are just like, hmm, what, what do you mean by that? So 
we'll go into that because I know I brought it up in the previous weeks, but we're going to actually do a live exercise. Ooh. So take a look at your calendar activities in our next exercise. Use your finished chart to determine the percentage of total time you spend in each section, in each category of activities. Then create a pie graph to give you a visual picture of your personal fashion system. So I'm going to give you a couple of the questions before we go into the categories. What industry are you in? Okay, so I'm in personal branding, so I guess that falls under marketing. Mm -hmm. How much movement or lifting do you do in a day? What do you mean by that? Like physically? So, yeah. So some people sit at the desk a lot, so they do a lot more writing. So that means they do like a little bit of a little bit of movement a day. Some people actually design, so they're moving their arm, and when they wear stuff, they they need to have stretch like fabric okay. so that they can like move around and not feel restricted. So do you do a little bit of movement? Do you do a lot of movement, or it's a day by day uh. cases? Oh, my schedule's the same every single day, Makara. So I'm very much um, meeting in the morning, activity all afternoon, meeting at night, because I have a three-year-old. So okay. I dress for my, yes, I dress for my lifestyle. Okay. And lastly, do you work long hours straight through, or do you work in um, intervals, like three to, two, th three to four hours, take a break, and then go back to work? Definitely. In okay all right categories as time is a limited resource we can never truly own we tend to try to make the best of every hour on this note most people have four main areas in which they spend their time one family time this is a time spent going to getting to know your family members better cooking mothering fathering your children and visiting relatives Two, professional time. This is the time spent working or networking. It could, it, yeah, it could be as a full-time employee, yeah, full-time employee or a part-timer, volunteer work, side gigs, or conventions. It's the time spent with colleagues. Your social time, which is the third one. This is the time spent trying to build relationships outside of your professional circle. This time is set arranging with people to be with your friends, take part of cultural activities, be friendly with your neighbors in Spain and attend church or other religious activities. And four, which is me time. This is the time spent alone doing what we love, like facials, yoga, exercise, sleeping, sewing, crocheting, or any other activities. Okay. All right. So now let's get into our live exercise i'm going to be actually writing this down and we're going to walk, walk it through with we're going to walk it through okay so, you write i wing it <laughs> yes, yeah yeah so you're telling me if you want to fabricate it i don't really care we're we're here i'm here to have some fun today yeah <laughs> <laughs> all right so let's go over professional so you, okay. you understand what professional sec, the professional uh category is yep. right okay so for your professional on Monday, how many hours do you spend as a full-time, part-time, side gig, or volunteer? In total, probably around five. That, and let's copy and paste that Monday to Friday. Okay. My schedule is the same no matter what day it is. Five hours? Mm. And that's your full-time job? Mm-hmm. Okay. So I work full time, part time. So uh, that's by choice, though. Oh no, I know. I just broke it because some people mm -hmm. have full time and then they have a part time job. So I, I just want to clarify. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that is your full time job. No other part time. Nope. Okay. Do you have any side gigs? Nope. Okay. All right. Do you volunteer? Not yet. <laughs> okay. No worries. Virtually, These are just... virtually yes, but not in person. Okay. Mm. I mean, that's still taking up your time. Yes. Okay, so how many hours um, on Monday or Monday through Friday? So it's it's only around two hours per month because I'm on a board of committees. So I only have to show up to the meetings and then everything okay. else is done virtually. Okay, so two hours per month? Yes, 
oh, actually, I just remembered, I am the president of a network business networking group, and that's on a weekly basis. So that's an extra two hours per week. So I forgot about that. See, look at that. This is why we combing through mm. it. I totally forgot it. that is a volunteer position. I don't get paid for that, so. It's volunteer. It's still taking up your time. Yes. You made me think. <laughs> But I said, let me do, let me have her do this exercise so people can like understand. Cause I know I took um, Tiffany when we were doing the shopping exercise. I asked her some of these questions, like how many, how much time? And she was just like, I don't really know. So yeah. I'm just like, let me try this exercise. With okay. You. All right. So we got that one. All right. So that is your professional. So for your professional, we have. Yeah, you have about 10.5 hours a week. That doesn't sound like a lot. <laughs> oh, a week. A week. A week. Yeah. Okay. Your total, yeah, the total hours you spend in your professional column, which you just told me, you Monday through Friday, you have five hours. You volunteer the two hours. Oh, it's five, um, five hours per day. Yep. Five hours per day. Okay. Oh, no. My math is wrong. There Sorry, y'all. I was like, I swear I work a little bit harder than that. <laughs> <laughs> like sorry, sorry, sorry. Look, I'm bad with numbers too, and I thought that's a little low. Okay, hmm. okay I got it. 25 that's plus bad. 2 in the half. Yes. Right. Where's my calculator? Ah. <laughs> sorry, y'all. It's been a long day. I hear you. All right, so we got 27 and a half hours per day. Oh, that's for, per week. For me. Per week. Gosh, per week. Okay. All right. So that is your professional. I have this written down. Twenty-seven and a half per week. All right. Let's, let's go on to the next section. Your social. All right. Hmm. Now, what do you do for entertainment? Not much. Just hanging, entertaining my kid. That's my main, my main job. Okay. Well, it's still a time. You can't get back time. So don't neglect. And you got to compartmentalize. So you don't go to like the movies, no. amusement parks. Mm. Whatever I do, I do with my, my, my kid. So I spend, so this is why I work the way I do. I spend my mornings and my evenings mm -hmm. on my projects and with my clients. And then the rest of the day I'm spending really good quality time with my kid okay so, so you spend a lot of, okay but that's so i designed that on purpose that's good though mm. yeah need that um, need you need that balance yeah. yes i mean if i don't have any kids so that's all mm -hmm. i'm just asking so i mean every woman's lifestyle is different i definitely have that in my book like i laid out there's one that's not even working at all she's mm. a stay-at-home mom she takes her kids to you know whatever activities and then she also supports her husband like she doesn't work at all okay. um and then there's another one woman there's another woman who's pretty much trying to build her own empire so her you know her out activities is higher than the woman so i have different variations there's no right or wrong answer mm. that's why i'm just laying out like these different options but every woman's lifestyle is different and yeah. we're all at different phases mm -hmm. okay okay so do you do any church or any religious activities no okay mm -hmm. dining out probably once a week once a week let's say that's probably three hours a week okay three hours because i don't have much of a social life okay all right so your total in your social is three hours all right let's, let's get to family time my family time is low mm. <laughs> compared to yours <laughs> family time all right cooking how many hours do you think you spend per week well we take turns in my household so maybe three three hours per week three hours quite long this is including saturday and sunday mm -hmm. right okay three hours per week i quick fast i cook fast not quick fast okay. <laughs> i'm like boom, 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 done yeah 
<laughs> I don't want to spend hours in the kitchen. It's not fun. <laughs> <laughs> How about cleaning? Who wants to spend a long time cleaning? I probably clean like 20 minutes here and there so my house is pretty clean though so let's say let's just say one hour per week as well okay again boom 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 done it's, it's not worth spending a long long time on all right how about laundry that doesn't take long that's like 20 minutes per week or something even to dry i got a dryer so look in my country in the uk we don't have dryers in an america this oh, you're from everywhere. Oh, you're from the UK. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So the whole household duty is totally different over there. Oh no, I'm big. So I'm in the US right now. I so, know, but I'm just saying. Yeah. The household like whole experience. Oh, the life's different. different. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. okay. Here in in this country, there's so many things that do things for you. So it's so easy to automate tasks right. that you don't want to do, and that's exactly what I do. I automate things that I don't want to do. A lot of it is household stuff. Give that to someone else or something else, like your, like your dryer. I don't want to spend hours drying clothes. That's a waste of time. Yeah, I'll source it. <laughs> so, okay. So how, how many, so how many, uh, what, what number did you say for I think 20 minutes, so per week. So that 20, 40, 60, that's roughly an hour per month. Okay. Again, boom, 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 done. 20 minutes. Okay, and mothering. That's the bulk of my time. So how much? So, how much? Time. So listen, I wake up at 6 a.m. Uh -huh. That's when I, so I do boxing on a daily basis. That's my time in the morning. And then 7 to 8, that's one hour, getting my kid ready. And then from 12, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, six i'm with my child so that's seven so that's eight hours per day with her eight hours per day yeah so mm -hmm. about 40 hours so that's a full-time job of course mm. yes um spouse no spouse time no Spouse time could be big could be higher probably we give each other quality time once at one one hour a day i'd say so it's not much oh every day that's monday to friday well that's monday to friday so that's five hours he deserves more time but i can't give it to him right now sorry and then the weekend is the whole day and then sun so the weekend we spend all of our time together so like eight hours would you say I'd six say hours, eight hours more. i'd say more the moment i wake up to the moment we sleep where I, oh, hanging I, don't, I don't know how yeah i don't know how long you're up so i'm just right. i'm just saying and i'm right. just number let's I'm see asking. let's see Let's say 9 p.m. till about, mm, let's say 12 hours on a Saturday and 12 hours on Sunday. Oh. So that's okay, so full family time. So 24 plus 7, right? Because you said one hour Monday through Friday, right? And so 24 then, plus 5. That's 29. Oh. Mm. Okay, that's okay. Not too 29 bad. hours per week mm -hmm. with your mm -hmm. husband. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. spouse. okay all right lucky him that was more than i expected with, with what hanging out with my husband i mean yeah. these are questions to ask because i want to see if your clothes go with whatever you're doing in your mm -hmm. lifestyle a lot of times people are like i can't find something to wear when i'm going to such and such and i'm just like well do you know what you're doing? Like, is it aligning with what's in your closet? Because mm -hmm. when you compare these numbers, your percentages with whatever you have in your closet, well, this is why. Like, you go, you're you're mothering a lot, but you have a lot of dressy stuff. Mm -hmm. You don't want to get your dressy stuff like messed up. Mm -hmm. So that's where you gotta come in and kind of strategize. And mm -hmm. a lot of people don't come to that realization. That's why I said, let me do this real life exercise um, that I have in my book. Nice. So yes. Okay. All right. So, so lastly, mm. personal. personal. Hmm. Define, define, define personal. Define personal is your, your, personal. you time, me time. Oh, that's like the bottom of my list. So let's see. Um, me time. Let's see. Shopping. Do you do any shopping? 
No, everything I do is with with somebody else. So okay. Uh, let's okay. Full, full, full mark point would be around. Mm, let's say five hours per week. On oh, what? Personal. Okay. What do you, you like? What are you doing? Like, what's the activity? Because you got to be specific. Oh, boxing. Is oh, the you first know? thing that I do for boxing. myself. Okay. Okay. So that's yeah. Um. Yeah. So yeah, me, me time could be better, but it's coming. Okay. All right. All right. So let me add up your family. Oh, Bear with me, so folks, because yeah. math is not. Listen, a calculator. Shout out to who invented the calculator. <laughs> Nine, 20, eight, mm. 93. So you spend 93 hours in your family time, three hours with, with social, five hours with your, with your me time and your professional is 27.5 per week. Interesting. Does that sound I right? Think so, yeah. Okay. You know what you need. You need you need a lifestyle clothes, lifestyle calculator on your website, and that's gonna drive people to, and Don't analyze this. People are afraid of math. It's it's. I mean, just me explaining this breakdown, mm. they kind of get intimidated. Mm. So the calculator, they're like, "Oh, I thought you were a stylist." I think they would be a little. I would need to like research that. Uh, it's a it's, good idea, but this kind of activity people are like oh i'll do this later and i'm just like when girl because we can't do the closet audit an audit it's you need an audit for anything to realize exactly what you're doing what you're thinking and what you're doing could be completely misaligned all right and that's exactly what you're trying to figure out right so correct mm. all right all right so now that we have these numbers let's talk about what you have in your closet okay so since your family category is so significantly high it's like the majority if i had like my little pie chart because there is a blank one in my book and mm. you would like shade in these sections mm. um, um do you feel like you have enough clothes to function in your category of with your family like when you do when you hang out with your husband are you satisfied with what you're wearing so Yes. So, um, so I'm your, I'm not your average woman. I have a very small closet. I have a capsule closet. So okay. all season I wear the same stuff. No That's matter fine. if it's summer, spring, no matter what it is. And, um, uh, my clothing is very functional. So I can go from a zoom meeting to a play group on a drop of a hat. So I can just jump into, I can seamlessly jump in and out of my activities. So I definitely dress for my lifestyle. However, I have a very specific style with mm -hmm. how I put myself together. So I always wear some sort of like headpiece. I wear, you know, I usually, it's hot today. So it's usually a t-shirt with a blazer on top, very comfortable trousers, but it's smart looking. I don't like doing jeans that often. Me and either. girl, sports bra and trainers everywhere because um, I, I'm, I'm a trained diplomat and I was, the one advice that I was told by my instructors is always be ready to evacuate and run. Mm -hmm. So heels is like a no go for me. Absolutely not. Okay. So I need to be sure that no matter where I am, I'm ready to just be on the move. So that's just the way I'm trained. Okay. I, I mean, everyone's lifestyle is different. There's no right or wrong. I'm not saying that you have to do it this way. You have to do it that way. Mm. It's just to get a better understanding because my job is to help you bridge your personal brand with who you mm. are. Mm. You can be a woman who's training for the Olympics, and but yet you, if you get caught by the paparazzi like on, yeah. a, on a training day, you just still want to look your best. Like, I'm not saying there's a right or wrong way, but it mm. just needs to be a better understanding. We got to unpeel whatever you got going on yeah. in the background. Okay, so you are a minimal, I would say, so you're like a minimalist. Yeah. You're very minimal. You, you're you comfortable in that, which is good. So that's great. And what about when you are mothering? Is it is it is the wear flexible with when you're with your child? 
like do you got are you guys like active and it's still comfortable for you yes i need to be able to be on the trampoline and roll around on the floor in exactly what i'm wearing right now so for me it's um um what i put on my face is needs to be quite dramatic and dynamic which is what i have on right now right um, because if i don't then it does look like i'm a plain jane i don't do jewelry whatsoever because i don't i'm not a jewelry person uh -huh. but i think because my life is so practical mm -hmm. um it just doesn't suit my lifestyle at all okay mm -hmm. i mean yeah there's nothing wrong with that <laughs> nothing is wrong with that just asking the question is some there might be a lot of women out there like that and you mm -hmm. are sharing your story and a lot of people a lot of women will probably resonate with you me on the other hand i'm probably gonna be a little glam mom okay yeah. i like little color come on kids but yeah um, absolutely every woman is different yeah it's no right or wrong way i mean my, my my clothing is um there's pops of color everywhere so the lipstick i have on right now my shoes are exactly the same color or the headwear that i have is right. exactly the same color so those are the pops of colors that i inject and it shows okay. up my yeah, it shows up my personality because I'm a very like energetic person. So I I need those colors. And the minute I'm in all black, there needs to be some type of color somewhere, color. somewhere, mm -hmm. anywhere. There needs to be some either it's on my head or on my feet. Okay. Okay. Um, I think what else? The the mother and your spouse takes up a lot of your family mm -hmm. time. As far as like your cooking, cleaning laundry but you're a practical person so these are fine all right so when we get to your person your me time your boxing oh. you enough athleisure stuff or are you like frustrated finding stuff to wear when you do this activity last one i'm very frustrated this doesn't feel like me uh -huh. um it doesn't feel like me i just wear whatever i have i try to inject some of my personality into my athleisure wear um right. But also, I'm not going anywhere. I have an entire gym in my basement with all of my boxing gear. So I, I'm not dressing for anyone. I just need to make sure that I can get in and out of it as quickly as humanly possible. Mm -hmm. uh, because I have like 10 minutes to get dressed from working out to doing, you know, I guess family stuff, like you, like you right. said. But I could, need, I could use some help in that area because I'm going to have a photo shoot mm -hmm. soon where it's a lifestyle photo shoot so the photographer is going to be in my home capturing every moment of like what you said you know the boxing the mothering me being the boss and right being with my client and you know the the um the boxing stuff is the part that's stressing me out the most out of everything that's the part oh, i like you realize did yeah. you realize you didn't have enough um boxing stuff before or are you just now realizing it during this exercise oh i'm like i don't want to be photographed in that that's what i'm thinking <laughs> <laughs> it's like that is like no i just i bought that because it was it was practical it's functional mm -hmm. doesn't look great so yeah okay what would be like your ideal outfit for this photo shoot or for you to for you to be in boxing happy Mm. Like your ideal outfit. Yeah, um, um, I mean, it's it's obviously like t-shirt and leggings, but the t-shirt, um, it's really really hard because I'm really short. I'm five two. Um, it, it's really short to find V-necks. It, yeah. it's, it's always it's always but like you, up to my neck and up. Mm -hmm. yeah, so it's, it's hard to find that. And then a lot of um, I guess gym leather wear, uh, leisure wear, it's short shortcut so i'm a modest dresser so i want i want to be covered mm -hmm. um by choice and then a lot of it's skin tight and i don't want to be skin tight but then it's oversized to the point of you looking like you're in a tent so mm -hmm. finding the medium is really really tricky and then on top of that um the colors are weird so i i mm -hmm. know what color palette i am i'm a dark winter mm -hmm. it's impossible finding dark winter tones other than black and white black and white you can find anything but v-neck making sure that it's the right fit for my body without it being too skin tight without it being oversized something with a v-neck that's really really i feel like i can't find anything that checks those boxes right you would be categorized as a petite woman. yeah so mm -hmm. that, that market is like very limited 
as far as when designers make stuff. They don't have that body type in mind. I know, but there's so many of us around. I, I know, <laughs> oh, but I'm just, I'm not, yeah. the clothes, <laughs> I'm not the clothes maker, but I'm just like letting you know as a person that's, you know, worked, you know, help helping the visual, um, the merchandise and when they mm -hmm. select stuff, there's very limited stuff. And when you're able to ask the designer, like they don't have that in yeah. mind because they have, a certain body type in mind and it's it's not it's usually not the petite unfortunately mm. and to do something about that Makara, come on do you, help them do you have a tailor or a seamstress on speed I dial wish. i can't find one i've asked my network for a tailor or a seamstress and it's crickets i'm not hearing anything and i really want that because again petite women oh petite woman there's a ton of things in my closet that I love, like the blazers. I always wear blazers. Right. They are too long for me because it's not size for someone short. So, so I did take all, a lot of my clothes to a local tailor. Mikara, they said, oh, we don't work on this, or we don't turn this into V-necks, or we don't shorten blazers because it's too much hard work. So yeah, that is like the ultimate Thing I would tell any petite person, a man or a woman, mm -hmm. you need to have your tailor or seamstress on I, speed dial. I know. When Do you have anyone? Buy clothes. It's that. It's just not meant for a percent a petite yeah. person. Yeah. Uh, I, I want to say where are you located, but I don't. Yeah, I'm gonna be putting this out, and I'm very big on integrity, so we'll chat after. Mm. Um, yeah, having a seamstress or a tailor on speed dial is like your golden ticket yeah they can live in my house it's, i'll i'll feed them <laughs> yes <laughs> yes i will teach them british yeah. english if that helps i don't care like seriously yeah i definitely <laughs> i yeah i hear you i definitely need a seamstress for sure yes. you know what my entire, my entire family are petite my husband is petite he's really short for a guy so we 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 will yeah, that person, one person can help the entire family. Yeah. Mm. That's why I said any, that's why I said any petite man or woman like that should be on speed dial. Mm. So your seamstress and your tailor should be on speed dial. Yeah. Because everything you're going to buy, unfortunately, they don't have petite people in mind. Mm. Unless you find an independent designer or brand that caters specifically for petite yeah. people, better look through on Instagram. But like the other, no majority they do not unfortunately you know what i can if you have a designer i will be their brand manager and i will do everything for free if they can help me out because i will wear all of their clothes i will give them a huge shout out i will manage the entire personal brand but i just need help fixing all of this so <laughs> yeah <laughs> you guys hear that help be <laughs> <laughs> sos yeah <laughs> all right let's get into the next category professional you spend mm -hmm. 27 and a half hours per week do you feel like you have enough professional wear? oh my entire class is professional okay yeah okay i'm good i'm good with professional okay and the last category is your your social mm -hmm. which was very little which was dining which was three hours i just week. wear the same thing that i'm wearing right now and go off with my husband so i figured it would be with um it would be like intertwined with your mothering or your husband mm -hmm. because you spend so much time and i'm just looking i'm literally looking this is what i would do with my client and i'm like well is your entertainment with your uh whatever's big i'm like is, is this yeah this is what i would do yeah. You know what the funny thing is my husband um this is a joke but it's a it's a real joke um he always describes me as the city girl so i'm from london originally and i look more like the city girl now than ever in my life mm -hmm. so um you know we go we go to farm trips and here i am with you know the hat the glasses the blazers mm -hmm. and and i look very out of place but that's just my style and i want to look like that i don't want to look like a country bumpkin because that's not me mm -hmm. But um, so I dress the same consistently no matter what situation I'm in, whether it's a playgroup to going grocery shopping to 
being with my client on a Zoom call to a networking event, I'm consistently the same. So I very much practice what I preach because my personal brand is part of my business brand. Mm -hmm. That's exactly what I do for my clients. And I always tell my clients, it doesn't matter what you wear for me. Um, as a solopreneur, be consistent with the style that you choose. So if you want to wear a hoodie and a baseball cap as part of your business brand, just do it consistently. And then people will say, oh my God, she's so Tarleen. Oh my God, she's so Mikara. Oh my God, she, he's so John. You know, that you become very memorable. Mm -hmm. It's almost like if there was a Halloween costume with your style on it, people will know that belongs to you. I kind of don't disagree because <laughs> what you wear, I'm not saying it has to be name brand, but no. looking look having a well fitted outfit on and not looking sloppy mm -hmm. says a lot mm -hmm. i i mean there's just countless times where someone has brought you know someone who didn't think that their image mattered oh, and yeah. when i mean image i'm not just talking about clothes i'm talking about your skin looking mm -hmm. amazing having mm -hmm. clean nails having a well fit um shirt pants your shoes are polished. I, I I I have it on my business card. Your personal appearance is your biz, is your business card because no mm -hmm. one is handing out business cards. So when you come in a room, you are speak. Your image is speaking before you even have a chance to say hello. So I disagree, and I'm not saying it because I'm a stylist, but even on my down days, if I wear a t-shirt, mm. because I'm very moody the way I dress. I'm not. <laughs> you dress with your with your emotions. Yes, yeah. I'm very moody. Some days I feel like, you know, just being whatever, but I'm still comfortable in whatever, but I still get approached like, hey, are you in the fashion industry? Because mm. your accessories mm. or that bag that mm. you have on, um, I just feel like the way you present yourself definitely says a lot, especially if you come outside with your shirt iron, a well mm -hmm. a well fitted outfit. Your skin is clean, you got that haircut, um, or issues well combed. Like I'm just talking about the whole presentation, not just clothes. Yeah, that look, is my it's like you just rolled out of bed and just boom, you're working, right? Which is a lot of people's reality. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but I mean, try that for a week and then try putting some effort mm -hmm. and then you see the difference. You can do your own case study and see the difference how people treat you. Absolutely. Number one, how they talk to you how much advancement you'll get it's mm -hmm. it's a whole different experience mm -hmm. so i believe that your image i'm not just talking about clothes yeah um i'm talking about your whole presentation i'm not saying to wear you know that Louis Vuitton yeah. or get your nails done yeah. just have clean just just look presentable yeah please take a shower and brush your teeth and brush your I, hair i'm not around people <laughs> who don't brush your teeth and shower so <laughs> I don't need to go into detail like that, but I mean, I would hope so. I know, right? Yeah. 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 All right. So, so, all right. So you have a very practical and you know, you have a very practical lifestyle as well as, um, well, not lifestyle, but the way you dress, the way you present yourself. I feel like you have a very extensive like headpiece collection i feel like that's that's like your it thing yeah without it people will be like who's that uh, so uh, yeah so it's it's a new thing but i i do have i mean i don't do accessories that is my only accessory so i need i need a good i need a good you know array of scarves and and i'm looking for more because uh, i'm wearing the same stuff over and over again in terms of my accessories so yeah yeah, hats. I could, I could I could use more. Yeah, hats. I feel like will probably be your thing because you could definitely spice it up. Scarves. Mm. There's so many. Plus, this is what you see. Like when I'm on a Zoom call, you don't see the rest of me. It's this, you know. All right. So, so yeah, I can really jazz it up on my head, I guess. <laughs> no, I'm just looking at how much time you mother, and I know when you're with your child. Mm. you have to be active mm -hmm. so those are things that you can just instantly just take off take on your hat your scarf oh thanks it, you have it. it doesn't go it just it's, i have figured out a way that thing does not move from my head so it's seriously i the minute i get dressed it's with me for the rest of the day i don't mm -hmm. fluctuate i i just don't move around with it 
But it was but no, I'm just saying mm -hmm. as far as like if if you had to do some type of like activity like do boxing, you could just take it off mm -hmm. and just do what you got to do. Like you can you can hop at the drop of a dime. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay. How would you just describe your personal style in three words? This is what I'm chic. I'm sporty shit, sport, not shitty. Oh my gosh. Um, <laughs> I'm, it's late. It, I'm, I would say I'm sporty, mm -hmm. city, chic. Okay. Shiggy, you are from London. Yeah. <laughs> I hear London people say this word. Oh, really? Yes. Okay. Yes. For the people who do not know, what does that mean? Okay. So the funny thing is an American used that to describe me. Mm -hmm. So it, it was actually not my word. It, it wasn't the word that I would describe to choose myself, but I have adopted it because I think it's quite. So someone who's presentable is able to put themselves together um, effortlessly. So that would that's my description of chic. S H I C. That's okay. It. Would you? Well, you don't really shop too much. I was going to ask. Would mm -hmm. you consider yourself as a impulsive shopper? a one of one shopper when you shop for clothes are you intentional about when you buy your clothes so oh i'm a one in one out kind of girl so um i always look at the colors selection first mm -hmm. and then i go with the style so i know what style fits my body type because i uh, so as part of my i do image consulting for solopreneurs because you know this um a lot of people don't think about how they put themselves together oh, and i'm turning no I'm, and i'm turning these entrepreneurs as brand ambassadors right. for their business meaning you're not hiding behind the scenes anymore you're in front of your business doing your thing and turning them into their brand you know brand icons in their industry uh, so the backstory is important the way they present themselves is important but my biggest thing that I share with my clients is consistency, consistency, consistency. You have to be consistent with your brand. And this is how you grow your brand reputation and credibility. So, um, and that goes for the way you put yourself together. But it has to be intentional and it has to be strategic. Like, don't just, because I think the way you dress, I see your style and you are, you love your accessories, girl, but you are consistent with that no matter what you wear. Absolutely. And, it's my sister. I call it my signature. Exactly. Consistency. Because sometimes I gotta dial it back because I'm around yeah. conservative people. But um, yeah, my signature, like my it thing, is yeah. accessories. I'm a bald woman, so it would look very bare. But that's but that, it. and you can see that it's very clear that that's the style. That, but you strategically, like, you strategically went for that. You designed that for yourself, mm -hmm. and you know that. I don't know, I don't care if I dress up or dress down, this is one thing about me that's not going to change. And this is how you build that brand consistency. So obviously you're a great example of that. Mm -hmm. But a lot of the entrepreneurs I work with have no idea. They have yes. no idea. So, um, gosh, I forgot what the point was of me ranting on about this. Oh, but... do you know what um, type of shopper you are? My oh, next yeah. question I'm going to yes. ask you, because mm. uh, you're, you're more of an intentional, because you know your lifestyle, you're aware. A lot of people are not aware of what's going on. And you, I, I feel like you have a grasp of that. But I'm a scared um, shopper, though. I'm a scared shopper. I'll go into a store, I look around, mm -hmm. and then I get scared and go, I don't know if that's the right pick for me, because I want to make sure that whatever I choose for myself, I wear it all the time. So I want to match intentional. For me, yeah. that's intentional because you know what works for you. Like, again, you're aware of what is good for you. You know your palette and you stick with it. Mm -hmm. Versus someone else, they copy off of a mannequin or they right. copy off of a female or they just buy one piece and they don't know what matches with what in the closet or another one will buy because they're going on vacation. Like, mm -hmm. you have a lot of these different types of shoppers, but you are mindful of what works for you you and you stick with it so i would categorize you as an intentional shopper because okay. you're aware of it okay um are, do you know your body you know what body shape I, you are i'm a petite apple oh i'm a little apple <laughs> <laughs> okay i'm an inverted triangle mm. okay some people do not know their shape either which oh. is another 
thing. I found out a few months ago because, so this is what I wanted to say. So mm -hmm. as part of my image consulting, I've, I've partnered up with a, um, a stylist who happens to be based in London. It's just, yeah. So we, she does um, a two hour wardrobe edit for my clients virtually. Um, so I hired her for, because I was, I was thinking there's something missing in the way I'm dressing myself and that's the shape. I was, Nikara, I would look at, you know, the diagram on the internet and I'm trying mm -hmm. to figure out, am I a pear or am I an hourglass? And there's never an apple. Um, and I was flip-flopping between a pear and I was thinking, I don't think I'm a pear because I'm not bottom heavy. And then I'm not sure if I'm an hourglass because I'm not bottom heavy um, mm -hmm. because hourglass is this. So I was always stuck with the shape. And then when I hired my consultant, that's, she was the one that said, this is, this is what you are. And now let's look at your entire wardrobe to make sure that your body shape fits the clothes that you Correct. got. The, the silhouettes yeah. of the clothes. So this is new for me. Mm -hmm. This is new. I'm still learning. Yes. I, um, that is like one of the things I do but the way I do my body shape assessments, I actually have my client come in and draw out, like outline their body. And I also put that in the book, but I outline the body so that people can see, because a lot of people learn better visually. So you see mm -hmm. like, oh, mm -hmm. I didn't notice my hips were wider than my shoulders or, oh, I didn't notice, you know, this proportion. So then I can educate them on, you know, what this is, this is where you need to bring the attention. This right. is why you don't like, you know, you don't like your, your lower half because mm -hmm. you have wider hips and thighs. So now you have to re-strategize and bring all the attention up top. Mm -hmm. And when you buy clothes, you have to buy clothes that flatter because the, the clothes conform to your shape. Clothes are already a shape, but mm -hmm. your, your body is the dominant shape. So the clothes will conform to your body shape. So it's like a re-education on doing that whole thing. And they learn a lot. Yeah. Other than, you know, it's it's backwards for people to think, I need to lose 10 pounds to fit into that item of clothing. And it's like, no, it should be the other way around. Clothes should conform to you, not you conforming to an item. Correct. Right? So I love the fact that you do that. Yes. I, um... I was reading a, I forgot what book it was. I read, I read a lot. I read like a book a month. <laughs> nice. That is like, that is my me time yeah. reading. But um, it was one of an old book and I was like, I don't want to do the whole measure around. I'm like, I don't mm -hmm. feel like it's precise enough. Mm -hmm. Like I really want my clients to have the greatest results and doing it that way along with taking the measurements because you're going to need your measurements anyway when you shop or if you have some type of sub something special but i feel that way is a lot more beneficial to the client because they like i said they visually learn and see like oh i didn't realize my body shape it makes so much sense mm -hmm. now so yes yes it's a it's a huge learning curve because there's so much things that you have to unlearn because society forces a specific image you must be this tall like you said there's no clothes for petite women but everything is designed for taller women that's a huge problem and then everything's designed for this figure not this figure or that Her. figure or, or yeah predominantly america is is a size eight and up, eight and up, but they mm -hmm. made it here. So, and then also the waistline. Some women have longer weight, like your torso is longer. Some, some are smaller. That's another problem. But you have men, their clothing, you have like their suit or their shirt is like six L or six R. And I'm just mm -hmm. like, well, why don't we have this? So, the whole designing production of how women's clothing and get where the most we we're the ones that consume and shop mm -hmm. the most it's just a little i don't know it's just a little off but yeah and here's another problem i have a lot of the time so i have i have you know big biceps and then this is already like really tight so it's kind of like what about for the curvy fit women who are short right. so this is why i have a really hard time with the athleisure wear because there isn't anything for that type of person correct and there's a lot of us out there so there's a huge market so whoever's an entrepreneur who knows how to design clothes wants to work in athleisure there's a massive market and again you and i can really like make them 
huge. Oh, they tried to pay me, sweetheart. <laughs> like, we will be their power team. Seriously. Yeah. Oh. Oh. We'll you, can tell them, you can tell them what they need to decide. I will get their brand out there. Yeah. Yeah. Well, hey. There you go. I mean, the, the, the whole direct-to-consumer thing is just so amazing. I, there's so many people who have started their, their brand off of social media. Mm. And I don't know. I just feel like it should be so many more. But I don't, I don't know what people's economic uh, situation is post-pandemic. But I don't, yeah, I don't know. But Look, people are I spending love, money. Huh? They just, the people are spending money no matter if it's a pandemic or not. There's always people spending. But, oh, I know, I know, mm -hmm. but some it's so much that goes into designing. Mm -hmm. It's so much that goes into designing. It, it's it's a lot of money spent in the uh, design, the design production phase, and you haven't even gotten to produce actually producing mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I don't know. Some people are get kind of like intimidated, but yeah. I do love this climate, though, of the direct to consumer. I'm very, I'm very excited about this new era for my business. Mm -hmm. 2024, I will be out on my little book tour with these conventions and expos. Definitely be on the lookout for that. Do you want to share anything for the people? Where can they find you? What can they know about you? Oh, absolutely. So, you know, I'm a personal brand consultant for solopreneurs. So I help entrepreneurs be the face of their business so no more hiding behind the scenes it's all of, it's about you first and then how your target audience can um, connect with you and then once they buy into you your service and your products is so easy to sell afterwards um, so you can find me um, Google boss diplomat I have podcasts I have YouTube um, obviously my website and the best way to get in touch with me is by booking a power hour session with me and I really dive deep into your personal brand or your business brand and look at all of the holes and gaps in your business and we fix it on the spot okay all right so you guys make sure you follow her boss diplomats you guys definitely can purchase my book oh yeah <laughs> What's your bean? Discover your fashion identity. I go through the whole thing of aligning your life missions with your wardrobe. And if you are, if you're struggling on trying to figure out your, your shopping strategies, um, dressing intentionally, and also the last chapter, I think was my most difficult chapter. Chapter five it is about nourishing your personal mm -hmm. style meaning you need to be in your element with your personal style not someone else's not you copying someone else's look you really becoming one with your personal style because you are the one wearing it and when you wear it it will execute outwards and no one can tell you anything else i thought that chapter was very needed and i used one of my clients she was a content creator i'm not gonna give too much away but each chapter has its own clients their own problem and exercises we did an exercise today if you guys like this exercise it, it's it's very, very intense but you will intense is good intense is good thank yes 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 you can like all of, log on. Like, i was gonna say that all of my sessions are super intense but once you get it done you've got it done correct mm. And you see, and you see a difference mm -hmm. afterwards. <laughs> this is such a wonderful series. I want to thank everyone for taking the time out, especially you coming on. Thank Ooh. you for inviting me. It was a pleasure. I love everything that you're doing. Oh, I'm gonna get you on my show too. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Let me know. Yes. We'll talk to me in the DM. Oh yeah. We'll talk. But you guys can find me at www.mean, that's M-I-I-E-N dot C-O. I definitely will be in a new era because I'm definitely in full execution mode with this business plan of my business. And again, like I said, I'll be doing a big book tour in 2024. I'll be at Boss Babe and Brunch in Boston, November 5th, selling the books. You can meet me. 
and yeah just just stay tuned i'll be i'll be i'll be definitely outside in 2024 okay right. <laughs> you're gonna blow up this world nicara it's gonna be great yes <laughs> all right thanks so much for tuning in what you mean the conversation series bye guys bye Hey everyone, Tiffany from Monarch PR here for another brand spotlight. I am so excited to introduce to you guys this incredible book, What Is Your Mean? Discover Your Fashion Identity. I am so delighted to have pre-ordered this book. I cannot wait to dive in and learn all about the different types of personal style and figure out which one is best for me. So please, if you are someone who struggles with figuring out what is my style, do I have fashion taste, order this amazing book by McCarter Reed, and I promise you, you won't be disappointed.